Hello and welcome to the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And now, the moment you've all been waiting for. It's the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. I love them a lot. Now, in this episode, we're going to be talking about a very controversial subject. Using weapons in self-defense or self-protection. And even using weapons against unarmed opponents when they attack you. Now, of course, in England, we have the thought where, you know, it's cowardly to use a weapon or you should use your fist. Well, that was what it was like years ago, and that's the way I would like it to be now, but it isn't, and weapons are an everyday feature of physical encounters. You just have to look at the news or read the newspapers or just go out and look around you. You can see that there are people that will not hesitate to stab you just for looking at them in the wrong way. And now, you most definitely cannot rely on the police because by the time they get there, the incident has already happened and somebody's already been stabbed and died or stabbed and is in a critical way. So the best course of action is to learn how to defend yourself, both unarmed and with weapons. So, when you're attacked, is it the right thing to do to use a weapon? Well, I would suggest it is, because if someone's attacking you, you don't know why they're attacking you. It could be because they want to rob you, they want to rape you, they want to kill you. It don't, you, you will never know that unless he says or she says before they attack you, I'm going to kill you. You know, something like stupid like out of a film. And you have to assume, you have to assume they are armed because if you don't, that may be the last thing you ever do. Now, how controversial is it to carry something to defend yourself with? Well, very in England because the draconian laws on weapons, possession and defence are just ridiculous. And around the world, it's a laughing stock because in most other countries, in fact, all other countries, you are allowed to carry something that you can defend yourself with. And in places like America, you can walk around with a guns, knives, anything you want, depending on the state you're in. But even most European countries allow their people to have handguns or chain guns and they're allowed to defend themselves when the need arises. In England, you have to wait for it to happen to you before they'll even consider coming. And even then, if it, they don't think it's a politically correct thing, they won't help you. They couldn't care less. So arming yourselves and having been taught how to protect yourselves is the best way forward. Now, when I say arming yourselves, I don't mean with a gun or a knife. You know, nothing offensively offensive. Nothing that will get you arrested if you get pulled up. And none of this stuff where you have to quickly take your belt off. Because by the time you've got your belt off or your shoe off or something, you're dead. You know, ridiculous things to do. So something that's ready to hand, like your phone, that can be put in the hand to help the punch or to stick out the end of the hand to hammer with, your keys, something that's in your pocket there and then, you know, a wallet, anything that has a hard edge or that can cushion a blow and that can you, you, you can use to help defend yourself against an attack. Now, if somebody attacks you with a knife, you know, Fairburn says there is no viable unarmed defence against a knife attack. And that is perfectly true. doesn't matter how many times you've done your Aikido knife defences or your Krav Maga knife defences, they're not going to work against someone who's determined to cut you up. They're just not. And you can test that. I mean, go into your club and pick up a, the plastic knife and just go ape shit on your instructor. Don't do what he says. Just go for him. And see how many times you've killed him in about four or five seconds. You know, that will tell you the truth of the matter. Another good thing that's still lawful, you can carry a walking stick. You don't have to need it, 
is a fashion accessory. You can carry a walking stick. So, you know, if you're trained in stick fighting or you've done combatives with sticks, it works really well against shorter weapons, really, really well. And also, should you use your defensive weapon against an unarmed opponent who attacks you? Well, yes, of course you should. They're attacking you. You know, you don't know why they're attacking you, as we said before. They just might be in a murderous state of mind. And they just want to throttle someone or smash someone to pieces for no reason than they satisfy their own ego. So, yes, if you have a walking stick or a bunch of keys and ram it into them, you know, smack them around the ear up with it. Make sure they know you're not going to lie down and take it. Make sure that you get proper training as well because... You know, just normal martial arts training may not be enough because it does take quite a while to get to a level where it becomes unconscious. Whereas if you take proper, decent um, self-protection, self-defense lessons, and I don't mean these silly, soppy, bloody feminist things where, you know, you need a little heel palm under the chin and, you know, they're dead. You know, I mean, proper blood and snot rolling on the floor fighting training. You know, go to people like Jeff Thompson come to our club, get proper self-defence training for both men and women. I mean, we don't separate the two. There is no such thing as women's self-defence and men's self-defence. If it works for a woman, it works for a man. So it is just self-protection, self-defence combat. And you need to know how to do that. Don't worry about all the fad martial arts like bar shih tzu, um, bar titsu, whatever it's called. Just make sure that you get proper down-to-earth training that allows you to fight back. That's all you need, something that gives you confidence and the physical ability to fight back. And if you are going to train in weapons for self-defense and you know you can carry something legally and you train with that weapon, make sure you train realistically. Do a lot of partner work. You know, do a lot of bag work with the actual item you're using. You know, Do lots of training with the actual tool you're going to use to defend yourself with rather than just a bit and then think, oh, I know it now. Just train with it. Train with it. The same, get your unarmed skills up to scratch because you may lose your weapon in an encounter. You know, you may hit someone, it may disarm you. They may disarm you. You need your unarmed skills to be up to scratch as well. So make sure that you you work out on the heavy bags, lots of partner work, Grappling work, you know, body holding, holding those fists and those elbows and training headbutting and things, eye gouging, things that are going to save your life rather than, you know, trying to be nice and polite to your attacker. You know, do them damage, you know, the same kind of damage that they were going to do to you. And also make sure your teacher trains your mind because doing physical violence to another human being is sickening, you know, it really is. And it can leave you with, you know, thoughts and memories that are really, really unhappy and they will haunt you for a while if you're not prepared properly in your mind. You know, they're prepared to rape you, kill you, you know, take your kids, whatever, and, you know, it doesn't bother them because that's the way they are. But you have to get a mental state that allows you to be as bad as them, but not as bad as them, if you know what I mean. You know, as bad as them during the encounter, so you can beat them at their own game, but compassionate outside of that, not always in that frame of mind that they're in. You know, do not rely on the police to be there to protect you straight away. You know, they'll come afterwards and... You know, they'll offer words of sympathy or they'll arrest you because what you did wasn't politically correct or something like that. But what you really need to do is just think about yourself and your family and your friends and make sure that you take on some responsibility for the protection of yourself and those people. Everybody should do it. A proper amount of fight training, using equipment, you know, partner work, a good instructor, good footwork, good mental training, everything you need to equip yourself for the streets. So really, the goal is easy. Find someone who knows what they're doing, train, and get that mental toughness that you need to defend yourself. I know it's a horrible thought that you have to do this in your life. 
it's a horrible thought that you may have to raise your fist to defend yourself against some maniac at some time or other in your lifetime. But believe me, there will come a time in your life when you will need to defend yourself. You know, you can either give in, curl up in a ball, take it, be bullied, you know, and f feel like you're worthless, or you can fight back. Doesn't have to be physical, it can be vocal, it can be mental, but fight back, at least try and fight back. You know, there's no reason to lay down and die. There's no reason to give in to these people. Stand up, fight back, teach your family how to fight back, get your friends to get training and learn how to fight back. But fight back. Thank you for listening to this episode of the English Martial Arts Podcast Show. And if you enjoyed this one, please tune in for the next episode. Listen to us, because we listen to you. 